welcome everybody. If you are here to um, listen to all our global friendships, you are in the right place. We're glad to have you. We'd like to thank our sponsors and supporters. Without this, we couldn't be going on our fifth global education conference. It's been um, a wonderful conference so far, so hopefully you've caught a bunch of sessions. So if you take a minute right now to show us where you're coming from in the world, the tool is on the left-hand side of the map. Just um, go to the sun. If you click on the sun, you have a couple of different options you can pick and, and place yourself on the map. We have a couple Australians, that's great. Canadian, there we go, a couple U.S. folks. <clears throat> the tool is on the left-hand side of the map if, you've, if you haven't installed it yet. Okay, great. Well, this is um, the list of the, the people that are in our group. Our group has kind of come and gone over the years, gotten bigger and smaller, but this has been um, the participants of our global group. And I'll talk a little bit about more about what we are and how we got started and um, how it's been the last couple of years. It's been such a great learning experience for everybody involved. And we've tried really hard to kind of keep a diverse group of teachers that we work with. And right now, at this point, we're meeting once a month on Skype to talk, and I'll um, talk about that a little bit more as we go. So what exactly is Global Friendships? All of us have um, global or professional learning networks, global or not. Hopefully, they're global if you're here at the conference. But it's a network of teachers that you talk to and share ideas with, and this is different than that. We all have that as well, and it's usually a much wider group of people. This is just a particularly small group of teachers that we work with, intentionally getting together to share ideas and um, share and create lessons together and create units. So we started out in a flat classroom pilot project, and I don't know, I guess somebody can chime in how many years ago was that? Was that four years ago? I see Lindsay's in the group. And we um, started on this flat classroom. How, someone's going to tell me how long it was? Can you remember? Okay. Um, we started off with that flat classroom pilot, and it was an elementary school pilot, I think grades four through six. So a core group of us started there. And then we went on to um, a certification program, some of us, through flat classroom. And part of that certification was to create a project. And my project was called Read Across the Globe. So I developed it, and I really wanted to try it out and do it. So I asked the few people I knew at that time to join me in it, and they did. And we met quite frequently developing this project and working together. I think we met every single week all summer talking about this project. And that was so meaningful to me. Then we went on and we developed that project and did it for a whole entire classroom, a class, a class year. So I thought that was so meaningful all those times that we met because when we got on the phone, we weren't art on Skype. We were not just talking about that project. We were talking about our classrooms and our policies, our internet policies and our um, administrators and all that kind of thing. And we really did some great work together and did some wonderful planning. So after that was done, and I think maybe even concurrently, I asked if maybe people would be interested to get together and just talk about having an ongoing group with really no agenda, no specific project, no specific anything. So that's how our global friendship started. And ever since then, I think it's been two, three, two years ago, we meet once a month on Skype, and it happens to be at 8 o'clock on a Sunday morning, which a lot of people would say, oh, I just would never get up at that time. It's 8 o'clock on Sunday to me. But more in Ireland, I think, I don't know, it's probably around 4 in the afternoon. And in Singapore, it, may, it might be um, 8 o'clock at night. And it really was the only time that we could all meet that we weren't in class and we weren't asleep. So that has worked out really good over the years. And not one of us ever complained about meeting at that time. We've gotten so much out of it. So really, from that core group of people, we've tried meaningfully and intentfully to add people that would be that would complement our group and that would 
be a diverse crowd. We could certainly get a ton of people from the United States, but we've been really careful to kind of keep it diverse. We've worked with Flat Connections and Iron, and we found, um, Moore and I from Ireland found each other on Twitter, and the Global Classroom Project, and through ISKI, and a lot of different places. We've kind of come together, made an intent to work together. And with all the people in our lives that are, that are kind of telling us we can't do it, or not as encouraging as maybe they could be, and maybe, you know, there's so many rules and regulations, it really has been a great thing to have people around that encourage you and and really want to reach for the best and really get the most out of each other. And it's been a great thing. And one thing we're going to each introduce ourselves by telling um, each other, or telling you how we got involved in, in global collaboration in the first place. That's me on the right-hand side with my class. And our school decided to have um, a global perspective goal for the school. And although that goal is still going on in our school, it really hasn't done a whole heck of a lot. But it got me involved in Slack Classroom, which came through my email, didn't know anything about it, jumped in, it was totally over my head, didn't know a thing about it. I didn't even know what a Web 2.0 tool was, and this was not that long ago. And um, people helped me and guided me through, and really it's been incredible since then with just the, the people that I've met. So we'll go, go ahead and um, continue our story. Hi, I'm Tony Oliveri Barton, and I'm over there on the bottom left with my picture. And I came in here in really 2009 with my students with Slack Connections also, and met a lot of people in 2010 when we did a Slack Connection certified class together. Donna, Nancy, who is in Singapore right now, who's not joining us, um, but is part of this group all got together and we were working on that Read Across the Globe project. Um, and so then we just kind of added and built up. And again, that's 7 a.m. on Sunday mornings for me. And some days it's really hard to get up. But it's really worth it because I always think about this group of people as my coworkers. They're more my coworkers than some of the people in my building because, as Donna said, we discuss in these meetings our lives, our successes, our struggles in school, with students, with technology. We spend a lot of time talking about what projects we want to start, and also even sometimes what topics we're studying to see how we can connect to each other. Um, we all do projects together, but a lot of us do projects outside of this group, so we're always kind of sharing ideas. And I am, uh, I used to be a tech teacher, but I am currently a teacher librarian. And we do a lot of global book talks with our students. So we're also always talking about books that we may do with our students, but also just great books that talk about global understanding and open our students' eyes to different things. So it's a, it's a great conversation always. And I always come out of it at the end of the meeting rejuvenated and ready uh, to do more projects together. So over to the next person. Hi, everybody. I'm Robin. And uh, I'm the furthest west. So the meetings for me on Sunday morning, I end up getting up at 5.30 in the morning to meet with these wonderful uh, folks starting at 6 o'clock. So you know, there's not a lot that would get you up at 5.30 in the morning on a Sunday. But these ladies and, and Matt are just amazing. Um, I really began to connect about three years ago, and we all choose to connect. Um, and since then, e everything in my world has changed. I met Tony and Donna through a Week in the Life project, uh, which was a flat class project, and I kept seeing them everywhere. Um, and once I joined the group, uh, I felt like I w really wasn't alone anymore, that I sort of found my people, people that were interested in the same thing that I was interested in. Uh, which you don't always find in the building that you work in. Um, the power of connections uh, several times a year. Uh, we work on projects and connect our students, connect each other with, with books and blogging. And um, through the group, we've managed to even speak with authors. Uh, the middle picture there was last year we've all done a book study together. And we um, met with the author. And all the classes got to ask questions and find out about the book. Um, I was really blessed this year to be able to go to ISTE, and uh, there's a picture there at the bottom of us with all our uh, all of our group and 
uh, people from the Global Classroom Project are in that, and we we felt we really knew each other already, but it was great to have that personal connection. Um, so it it just makes everything and every day so much better. And I'll move on to my uh, next slide, which is why should you bother going global? I mean, there's a lot. It's not easy. Um, it you know, you have your tech issues, you have your time issues, um, but for me it came down to student learning and what I could do for my students as well. So through all of our connections, we've managed to develop an awareness of other cultures and all our similarities and, and our differences and how basically we're all just the same. And uh, I managed to meet Govinda, um, who I know this is in there, and uh, work with him this year. And I think it really helps our kids to develop that global mindset. Um, all of our children connect several times a year. So they've done the book studies, they've done the author's writing, and they're really excited to see each other. Uh, when we do Skypes, they're really excited to see each other commenting on everybody's blogs. So this group has given me a way to give to my students. And I'm learning more and more every day from everybody in the group. So I want to say thank you to all these wonderful people for, for uh, letting me join your group. Hi, um, I think this is my slide. Uh, it's Mara from Ireland. And I think I actually get the best deal of the meetings on Sunday because my meeting time is usually 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It's lovely. I'm usually looking out of the water in front of my house and talking to everybody about um, all the different things that we do. And I suppose I, I kind of fell into this by accident. By, I joined Twitter on the advice of a very good friend, Katrin Cronin, um, who teaches online learning in the university in Galway, close to where I live. And she suggested I join Twitter. And I wasn't on Twitter a wet week when I met Donna. And Donna was looking for people to take part in a project called Using Data to Make Sense of the World. And it was kind of a geography project, but it brought in so much more. So of course, at the time, I was signing up to absolutely everything. So I signed up for that. And it was a fantastic project with, with people from all over the world talking, sending pictures about their localities, about their areas, and it, it, animals in their areas. It was really amazing. Um, I was. A bit like when Donna said she started, I was Donna at the other end where I had no clue about a lot of the tools. And through Donna, learned an awful lot about the different tools. Uh, one of the things I got involved in was a, a fantastic project about um, a man who left Ireland and ended up living in Chicago. He was a traditional musician. And he ended up being chief of police in Chicago. And we worked on a great project. And it was all about one man across an ocean, two countries, and the differences, similarities, and it just really captured the imagination of the children in my class, and I, I know Donna's class as well. But I suppose I mentioned there that I was I was green to all of this, and one of the I suppose the biggest challenge to globalizing my classroom and maybe lots of other classrooms is the difficulties with technology, and in particular I suppose internet access, and that's a huge issue in our school. We're kind of a country school. We live by, we're beside the sea. We're in a village. And uh, we keep having all these tech companies saying, oh, we can't get to you. You're too far away. Anyway, we've found lots of different ways around it. I have a very good parent in my school who has an internet company who gave me a direct access to um, an internet connection in my own classroom. So when the school internet goes down, I have my own internet. The other difficulty, of course, is lack of devices in the classroom and lack of regular accesses. We are very lucky in our school that we have a, um, a room with 32 laptops in it, but it's timetabled with the whole school, and so we only get there maybe once or twice. Uh, last year, I tried out BYOD, which I think is a fantastic solution to all of this. Um, various obstacles, though, from within the school and outside. Uh, Donna talked earlier about people who don't really maybe believe what you're doing, and so they're not the same mindset as you, and that can be difficult. Um, also parents, you know, I had parents who kind of didn't want their children looking at screens all day, when they could be looking at a book instead. Um, another challenge, of course, is the time zones, and working the school day, we had a connection with Australia, we decided to learn about Australia, but we had to find, you know, I suppose, 
uh, various ways of going around it. And one suggestion, I think Matt and our group suggested one day, to make a Padlet with the clues if you're going to do a Skype, or make a short video in advance. Um, because obviously the time zone is very difficult with Ireland and Australia, it's 11 hours difference. Um, the other thing I suppose is using different web tools to connect and collaborate. These can be very time consuming and there's a lot of teachers, certainly my school, who start at the starting time in the morning and they finish at the starting time, in, uh, finish time in the evening and that's it. Most of my work with the group we talk about Sunday mornings, I sit on my couch editing blog posts, publishing blog posts, commenting to kids, doing 100 word challenges and it really does take a lot of time but I love doing it and it, the benefits are huge. And even to learn all the web tools involved like VoiceThread and Animoto and Padlet and the kid blog itself, they take time but once you get going it's just a fantastic resource to have in your classroom. I suppose finally I would say the, um, the different ideas about globalizing that say parents for instance have, the children themselves love this idea of going global, they just love it, they're doing it all the time on Xboxes and they see it as normal but lots of parents can be suspicious and um, they need to get across, I suppose we need to get across the value of global and that this is where the children will be in 10, 15 years time. Um, I had a parent who said to me last year she didn't want her child speaking with strangers on the internet. I don't really want my child speaking with strangers on the internet either, but with what we're doing, it's so moderated and it gives children the chance to make friends globally. Um, colleagues views, well, lots of them can be suspicious too and it's a, a daily battle to win them over. So. I'm going to move to the next slide. Hey, Lisa. Hello. Oh, Lisa, I might need you to move this for me. Yeah, I can. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Thanks, Mara. Uh, my name is Emily Roth, and I am in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia currently. And so for me, I think I'm the farthest, maybe east, in our uh, Sunday chat so for me it's not my Sunday morning it's my Sunday evening around 10 o'clock and uh, also I love this group it's been really wonderful to grow with them I met um, I met up with this group probably three four years ago when I went to an ISTE conference and I had never really done any global connecting or anything and I went to a session um, by Lisa, I heard her speak at a session and I said, oh, I want to start connecting with people. So I went around the ISTE conference and uh, got probably like 45 business cards from all these people from all over the world hoping to connect with everybody my first year. I'm super keen and ended up luckily connecting with Lisa instead of everybody because it was a bit overwhelming. And then, um, yeah, I just got into this group and have have been in and out involved with different projects over the last couple of years. So I'm here to talk to continue uh, our, the diff different challenges to globalizing what Mara was just talking about. Oftentimes there's lots of red tape that you have to get through and especially with policies and restrictions it can be either within your school or district. I, some issues that I've run into in the past um, is where I have, was working within this walled garden approach with respect to privacy settings and I was not allowed to get my kids online connecting with other kids and one thing that was really, really neat, I went in to talk to my principal and kind of tell him the why behind it and right before the uh, the meeting, I thought, shoot, I, I need to make sure that I have more backed up of what I'm going to say, research and more ideas, and I sent out a Google Doc to some people in this, P in this global friendship group, and because it was night for me and I was going to bed, it was day for them, they helped me fill out this, these questions and things that I was going to bring to my principal, and we ended up opening part of this walled garden so that we could participate um, using kid blog with my class, so that was pretty neat. Um, or certain tools may not be allowed, so it may not just be a, a, a policy per se like the walled garden, but for example in another school we weren't allowed to use Edmodo, but that was the, the platform for the particular project um, that I wanted my students to be a part of. 
And so, once again, you just have to sometimes be a little bit more creative. And and if you always start with the why of of what of why you want to do something rather than I just want Edmodo or I want to open this. Um, but if we're starting with student learning first, that that's always the winner. Um, something else to take into consideration. So sometimes it, it may not be, like I said, just policies within the school or the district, but maybe the country. So for example, if you are connecting with a school, let's say in China, and you want to do a Google presentation or a, or a doc together, you might run into some problems. So if you think ahead, though, and and try to plan ahead, it will just loosen or lessen some of the stress, and you can find ways around things. It just takes a little bit extra creative thinking. Uh, one other thing that's important to consider, and I think someone already mentioned it, was the the calendar. And for example, this year my school started a month before everybody in this group, and we were wanting to do a global book talk, and so it was you know, good for me because I had the extra time to prep kids. But then if you think about the end of the year, we're probably going to finish a month before everybody. So it's just important, once again, to think ahead and plan ahead when you're working with projects with, with people so that you set the right times and, you know, you, if you have breaks, you know, fall breaks, spring breaks, and that kind of stuff, that you just take that into account. Um, the access to students, so it's really important to get to know the, the either the partner or the group that you're working with uh, because it might take some time. I remember one time I was trying to partner with this person that I just randomly found on Skype in the classroom and I don't know, I, I, kept, I felt like I kept putting myself out there and then this teacher never responded so it was, we didn't kind of mesh well. So finding that, taking the time to get to know who you are working with is important. And then along that line, getting to know that person, the access to students may differ. So for example, I used to be a classroom teacher, so I always had, you know, access to my kids. I could always email them or I'm with them all day uh, in the classroom. But now my role <clears throat> is different. I'm a tech integration specialist. And like Tony said, she's a teacher librarian. So we won't see our kids as much as, let's say, Lisa sees her kids. Um, and so once again, there's something else to take into account when you are working in these projects. So then once you find that, that partner or that group that you're working with, it's so important that you commit to cultivate. As we've all been saying, we, you know, wake up early or stay up late to meet with this PLN group. And it's, it's sometimes, yes, is, is, is hard work, not, not necessarily the meeting part, but, but getting together um, the project or communicating with parents or whatnot. But if you always end up back at, why am I doing this? And most of the time, you just, I remember when I was a classroom teacher and I was, you know, having my kids on blogs and the most amazing things start happening. For me, one moment that stands out is one of my um, very reluctant fourth grade boy writers. It would take 45 minutes for him to write, you know, a couple sentences, and that was with me always prodding him. And once I got him connecting, um, we did some quad blogging, and he knew that he had this authentic audience, and he was getting comments from people all over the world, people that he didn't know. All of a sudden, he had, he was on fire. He wanted to write on his own, and he was this lifelong learner, and that was something, like I said, that will always stay with me. And if we always have that at the center of what we're doing, that we're looking, you know, to enhance student learning, then that, I think, also helps you to further your commitment to cultivate that learning. So I'm going to pass it on to my next global friends. Here we are. We have on the left. I'm 
Barbara. And on the right is Betsy. And we're from a tiny school in Salem, Massachusetts, just north of Boston. In the middle, we kind of included this picture because it has our global friend Nancy from Singapore who popped in to visit our school when she was home visiting her family. Our job is to kind of talk about there are challenges for all of us and what can we do about it. And I think it goes back to our story. I first met um, Donna and Lisa through a Week in the Life project. I just discovered it someplace and thought, hmm, this sounds is interesting. So we signed up and we got involved. And all of a sudden, I went, yikes. I don't have any idea how to do all this technology. So I would uh, run to Barbara and say, what are we supposed to do? And she'd come over and we'd try and figure out the technology. And at the end of that project, what we really learned was we better get a little bit more information. And we kind of re represent maybe many of you. We kind of have been in the field of education for a long time. In fact, Barbara and I share over 90 years of being educators in the classroom. And it was kind of amazing that five years ago we could decide, oh, well, let's try this global project. But we did, and we've kind of never looked back. And it was hard. It was tremendously hard at first, and we did get discouraged. And the nice part about it was the people we were working with on the project were the beginnings of our global friendships for us. And we made that connection. They helped us. We got excited. And we continued um, looking for projects to do. So one of the things we've learned is you just have to ask somebody, especially somebody who is um, in, a, in a project or tweeting um, to those of us who really love to be part of education and, and be a part of all this, you just have to ask. And if you don't ask, it won't happen. Um, I'm in the process of convincing one of the folks that um, I'm connected with to Skype with my students and allow her students to Skype with mine and do a mystery Skype and also talk about a book we've just read. And she's brand new to the, to the technology world and to the Skype world. And so I'm encouraging her just to go for it. And I think she'll love it if she does. So talk to someone. The nice part about having um, a crew that is are doing projects, and in our case, our global friendships, but anybody out there who is connected with global education and technology and is looking for projects is a perfect person to talk to. So you can start in very small ways. Um, something as small and easy as quad blogging and just talking to the two or three teachers that your classrooms are quad blogging with and it becomes a conversation, and then it becomes, well, maybe we could do this. And so that's the fun part of, 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 of connecting to each other, and it helps really make challenges into successes. I think another thing that we've tried to do is to um, build the global projects into the curriculum rather than sticking it on to everything else we really have to do. And that's why we have loved this particular PLM, because we meet on Sunday, somebody comes up with an idea of something we might do, you know, in a month or something, but that gives us time to kind of fit it in to the other things that are going along so that um, it isn't just, it doesn't become an add-on, it becomes really kind of part of our lives. And if I think back over the five or six years since we really began, I am absolutely amazed by how far all of us have come. And for Barbara and I, it's really been in, in many ways thanks to this wonderful group of people we have here. Because Barbara and I are the only teachers in our school. So we don't have the problem some of you have of colleagues that don't want to have anything to do with it. We don't have any colleagues we can even, you know, try to get interested. And we've been able to do this through our PLN. The other resource, um, particularly in 
Figuring out the technology for us has been our students. We often find that we have to use something new and we look at one another and say, well, okay, let's hand it over. And we hand it over to our students. They figure out how to do it. They teach the next level down. Those kids then figure it out and they keep on, on going. So yes, Barbara and I know a lot about it, but in many ways, our tech people, since we don't have any tech coordinators, it becomes the kids for whom this is their life. And the nice part about that is they become committed. They want to help us connect with another classroom or other teachers. They want to communicate with other kids. They want to make sure that we have the setup that will make it happen. So yes, we're talking to teachers about connect. You know, take a chance, communicate with, with your teacher colleagues across the digital airwaves and collaborate on projects. But when kids get involved, they also want to do that. And that's really amazing. So, you know, nobody is alone. And if you need help, there are always workarounds. And when you're a part of a PLN, you're friends, not strangers, even if you've never met personally. Um, and when you do meet personally, I'm sure it's even more wonderful, especially we know that when Nancy came to visit us. Okay, on to Matt. Hi, everyone. Well, um, my part of the uh, presentation is, is why we keep doing this, why we get up early on our Sundays or, or uh, if we stay up late and everything. And, you know, uh, there's a lot of reasons. When we uh, met about this presentation, we really wanted to emphasize the fact that we want to do this. Uh, we feed it off each other. We learn from each other. We encourage each other. Uh, when one person has a struggle, um, the rest of us are there to offer help or suggestions and encouragement. And, uh, so I guess um, I guess I'm just going to go through quickly here and, and talk with this list. Okay, so um, one huge thing uh, is that having a group like this is that we can uh, stay current with a lot of the things that are going on around us, and and that's in professional uh, networks that those are in our uh, our workplaces. But the beautiful thing about this is that different things are happening around the world at different times. Uh, and, and a lot of those things are dependent on um, school missions and initiatives and what they're focusing on. A lot of them are uh, culturally based or uh, what's going on in the news. And those are nice things to share because then we can pass those on to our students as well. Um, quite often we're, we're a creative bunch and we have uh, topics that we, we can share with each other. And, Sometimes we'll find that we can hop on board with those, and then sometimes we respectively pass too. And, and we all know that uh, teaching is a busy profession, and that um, that it, the nice thing is, is that we have those to, ch to choose as well. Uh, and yeah, so we all are uh, lifelong learners. Okay, I'm trying to read the chat board here at the same time. Um, yeah, and, and updating each other, uh, constantly checking in, seeing how things are going. That, that's uh, that's part of it all too, and and sometimes you know I'm not even the best at uh, responding to emails when things get busy, but uh, <laughs> and I know that uh, the ladies that are in the group with me are, are quite patient as well. And as we go through different roles and different changes, um, we get support from each other, and we also are able to see different angles and things, and and provide those to the group as well. We've all gone through uh, some form of career change over the years. Um, and so we have our own staff that uh, that we work with in our schools, but we have our staff, uh, our staff as well, our professional learning network. And it, it's a different kind of, uh, we're different coworkers. You know, we don't always work with each other and see each other face to face, but uh, this is a different type of meeting. And I really uh, have my batteries recharged a lot after our meetings and, and go back energized with new ideas and, and new projects that, um, being offered. And I am myself uh, have been a teacher and, and last year and this year I've become uh, a technology leader in our district. And I've been able to kind of pass some of these connections on uh, with teachers that are new, teachers that are seasoned, 
teachers that are uh, now have a hang of something and they're interested to investigate something further. So it's really cool to see that. Uh, we can count on each other. We uh, quite often, if we're having uh, an issue, you know, just even to talk it out is great, to offer suggestions, as I mentioned. And again, I I've grown so much since being in this group for a few years now, um, both professionally and personally. And it's been uh, it's been really nice. This is a, uh, a part of my professional and my personal life that I uh, that I really look forward to. Um, again, uh, new initiatives. We, we get together to plan new projects and activities. Sometimes uh, someone will come up with just a simple idea, and then it'll be blown out of the water by uh, everyone else's uh, innovative ideas as well. So that's really really cool. And and as you can see at the bottom of the screen, we have really cultivated a friendship over the years. And, you know, regardless of where we're at in our careers, I think that's the bottom line is that uh, we have friends all over the globe, friends that uh, are in similar profession that we're in. And, and you know, I really, uh, it, it, the people in this group might happen to be ladies. Uh, there's, there's another uh, gents in the group. But, and as I said earlier, that's not what it's about. It's, it's about these people are good people. We have the students' best interests um, in our hearts and uh, in, in our minds. And we talk about creative ways that we can best help educate our students and, and allow them to grow as people too. And again, on top right, red right here, uh, we're doing, in this group, we're doing what we're asking our students to do. We're taking chances in our learning. We're challenging ourselves with new ideas, new technologies, uh, new initiatives. We're trying to change the world bit by bit too through, uh, through our work, through our students' work. We're trying to make it a better place and, and allow our students to live better lives. We're trying new things. Uh, we're collaborating and learning together. And bottom line, as I mentioned, we really enjoy this. We really want to do this. And that's why we get up or we stay up uh, in our respective times and have these meetings. And uh, when we had our, our final planning meeting, I wrote this down in green because I think this sums things up nicely. Um, we get something from our professional learning network, and we give something. And you know that's a, that's a beautiful thing when we're able to feel like we're contributing, and when we're able to feel like uh, we're really getting something out of this. So um, you know, to take this opportunity and say that I'm really happy and proud that um, I'm in this group and that uh, that I was taken in. That's been fantastic. And uh, yeah, that's my spiel. It's been pretty awesome, and I, I'm looking forward to uh, to a lot more connections uh, with new people and awesome projects with this amazing group of friends and coworkers that I have. Okay, I'll pass it over to me. <laughs> um, I am Lisa Parisi, and um, we have been friends since uh, 2011. Um, and in our first year of, well, I get, I'm sorry, I'm going to just go back a minute and let you know how I got started. Um, I, I met, um, as it was mentioned earlier, I met um, Betsy and Donna and Tony in the first pilot for the flat classroom project for elementary students. And um, you know the the pilot itself was was difficult and wasn't always successful, but we came out of it staying friends and um, and brought other people in and and um, just it has been absolutely amazing. This is our second year of our website, our global friendships, and in the first year, we did seventeen projects in the first year and and when we started it, the only reason we started the website is because we were coming up with all these projects and saying, you know, okay, let's tweet this out and let's try to get some collaborators. And we finally said, you know, we should have a place to put all of this and let everyone join in. 17 projects in the first year. We've done collaborative videos with children around the world. In fact, the first video we did you know, Matt mentioned how they're just, you know, like a little tiny idea will turn into this huge thing. The first video we did, Emily just came up with the idea of why don't we do 
a music video and everyone can participate a little, how, you know, what do you think? And we're like, oh, yeah, that sounds like a cute idea. Great, great, great. But the more we talked about it, the more we thought, you know, it's not just a cute idea. This is something we can actually do. And we did it last year for the first time. Um, we did a video with 17 countries, 33 schools, children around the world, um, collaborating on a um, video on a song from Pharrell Williams, the happy song from Pharrell Williams. And then this year we started the year with um, a peace video um, that got created for peaceoneday.org and. Um, we do quad blogging, and we've had so many people. We had last year with our quad blogging, we had six teams because we had so many people that 24 classes were involved in it. Um, and many of them were first time bloggers. Many people start with us saying it's their very first global project, and we welcome them in and, and we help them out. And I think. All, I think that this, that our being able to bring globalizing to so many people is really due to our um, relationships with each other. The fact that we um, meet once a month on Sundays, the fact that we want to do this, that we want to be part of it, and we, and we, it's very difficult for us to find like-minded people around us, so we went global to do that. And um, I happen to be one of the lucky ones because it's 9 o'clock on Sunday morning for me. It's not too early and it's not too late and it's just the perfect time. It's not right in the middle of the day. So um, Betsy and Barbara and I, I think, are the luckiest. Um, but But we really do bring to this um, excitement and enthusiasm and a desire to make things better. And I also want to mention um, one of the things that's so wonderful about this is we really have become friends. Um, I got to meet Tony and Robin for the first time last summer. Tony and I actually roomed together. I'd never met her before. And it was wonderful. And and the year before that, Donna and I did a project together, won an award, and met for the first time getting the award. It was like we had always known each other. It wasn't, you know, uncomfortable. And I, I can't wait to meet um, everyone else who I've never met. And it's just so exciting. Uh, we celebrate what's going on with each other. I mean, I am um, – I get to watch as everyone – into the classroom and becomes, you know, other things in districts and in in the countries and you know it's amazing to watch and it's exciting to watch and we all uh, just got to celebrate with Emily because she just had her third baby and it's so exciting and you know these are things that we care about because these are people we care about and um, and I think that. Excitement for each other also makes it possible to be so successful that we could have 17 projects in one year and um, pull so many people in. So at this point, we just want to point out some ways to connect, um, groups to join. You can join our Global Friendships um, Wiki, and you can see the Wiki link on the bottom. We're not opening up our our little group, but certainly find your own tribe. You know, go into Twitter, look for former coworkers, go find people here and get together and say, you know what, let's give this a try, and maybe we can talk again, um, you know, in in another month or two. Um, go into Skype in the classroom and find people, and. There are so many ways to connect out there and so many um, people willing to connect. And I know Emily had said earlier, sometimes you put yourself out there and you don't get a response, and that happens to me a lot. These happen to be people that I get a response from all the time. 
And that's important for my tribe. So find people like that for you. At this point, we're going to ask if um, you have any questions uh, to think about um, who you're going to find for your global friendships. And uh, you, here are all our Twitter um, names, so you can contact any of us. Uh, we we do have um, people in the tech world in our tribe here, uh, and Betsy is the principal. Betsy runs the school where she is. Um, all the Twitter IDs and are on the page right now. And if anyone from our little group wants to join in the, the talk at this point, or if anyone has a question they want to ask, they can either ask, they can either turn on their mic and ask, or they can um, type it in. But we would love to hear from you and love to hear what you have to say and what you would like to add, if you have something to add about this. And I, I might as well let you all know, we are um, starting up in it, very soon, we're starting up a global read aloud with a long walk to water. And in January, we're starting another, we're starting a round of quad blogging. And Hour of Code is coming up too soon, and we'll be posting that in there. So go to our Global Friendships Wiki, and you can find the links there to join in. Mm, Peggy, that's a really good question. They really like Skyping. I mean, I think. Um, I don't remember who had it in their slide. Um, I think it was, um, I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was. Robin, maybe, who had the Skype call with Catherine um, Hart. Catherine, I can't even remember her name now. I'm so sorry. Um, but she was the author that, I mean, we just, Thank you, Catherine Applegate. And we just tweeted out, like I had tweeted out that um, we were reading this book by Catherine Applegate, and she followed me on Twitter, and I almost passed out. And then um, when I told the children that she was following me on Twitter, and I contacted her and said, would you be willing to Skype? She said yes. She was amazing, and she was willing to do this for us. And and. You know, it had been a, a global book talk that we had about her book, and then that she was willing to Skype with us in a group Skype call was just amazing. And I do remember she sent me her phone number just in case there was a problem. And so I had her phone in my um, I had her phone number in my phone. And when we were Skyping that day, she called me first to make sure we were set. And we're all on Skype waiting, and my phone rings, and it was her. I almost passed out in the classroom. I told the children I was so excited. And, I mean, these are the kinds of things that happen just because, you know, you get together with people, and you find your PLN, and you talk to your peeps, and you reach out. You know, I always tell my children, if you don't ask, the answer is always no. So I ask always. Does anyone else in our group want to just say a final word or two? I just wanted to say real quick, if I could, Lisa, and so, sorry for not passing the torch to you earlier. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, <laughs> what I noticed, um, whatever project it might be, my students gain the most out of having a real authentic audience that listens to them, that comments, that critiques them, that encourages them. I find that, you know, there's one or two teachers in a classroom, and, and students appreciate that and get used to us. But when they have other like-minded individuals, other global peers around the world commenting and giving them feedback, that is when students feel like there's a, that audience that they're writing. They have purpose. And that's when we really see the gains and the steps forward uh, that students are making. I also want to add, um, answer, I'm having trouble with my chat, but somebody asked the question of, for someone new, what would you first ask? What would you first get them started with? 
I think, and I teach this a lot to colleagues in my district, um, join a project that people have already set up, like our global book talks or quad logging. Join something that's already out there um, and, and just try it out or set up a simple mystery Skype with somebody that you know or somebody you meet here today. Um, Jen Wagner does have easy projects. Um, not all of those projects are global, however. They're easy to do, but, um, but find a quick, easy project. Like global book talks are fabulous because all you're really doing is reading aloud a book to your class and then the kids go on Edmodo and have a conversation together. So they get to talk to people in Edmodo from somewhere else and it's very exciting for them. And something as simple as that can really set things off for, um, you know, for a lot of things. But so that would be my my recommendation is start with something that's already out there and um, just join in, you know, like Betsy and Barbara said, you know, start in whether you know how to do it or not, start in and then ask. One of the things we do on our global friendships is we always say, if you have any questions, ask. We're there. We, you know, it's what we like to do. Anyone else want to jump in? Oh. Well, let me see if I can get your mic on. Laura, can you turn your mic on now? Oh, there we go. Is that it? I think I did that. I kind of shut everyone's mic off. Sorry. Because there was a lot of noise. Who did that? Sorry, everyone. <laughs> I did. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. I just want to say for anybody starting out, just do it. Because you know what? It's been the best thing that's ever happened to me as a teacher, and I've been teaching for so many years. And the last three years, uh, because of my, I suppose, I suppose my initial connection with Donna and the different projects that we did, I've met all the rest of the group and we've had some amazing projects this year. I've, met, I've only met one group that I, that I hooked up with on the dot day and they were a difficult group to do with. They had a very different idea of what globalizing a classroom was to what I, what I believed it was. And uh, I won't be talking to them again, but there you go. Well, I might. So go for it, everybody. And I know um, it's hard to make different connections, but even the ones that you can make within the United States or within your country are really powerful. Um, after a mystery Skype with Iowa, all my students from Colorado, which is a beautiful state to live in, wanted to move to Iowa, and all the adults in the room were like, hey. And it was because in Iowa, 12-year-olds can drive a tractor. So that cultural exchange that happens even at the minor levels, and that was second graders. Um, it's just really fun. So start small and just build it from there with like-minded individuals. Uh, like Matt said, I think that taking a risk and going for it, um, all you can do is somebody's going to say no or you're going to fail. And either way, you're setting an example for your students. We ask them to take risks and fail every day. And so living what you're teaching is also really important. And I've never looked back. Life has never been better. And I think that my teaching has improved exponentially. So thanks. So thank you all for coming. And um, this has been a lot of fun. Agreed. It was great. Have a great night, everyone. Or day. <laughs>